Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into what an actual manufacturing order looks like. Um, first, we'll start off with a make to stock order and, uh, and also then take a brief look at our make to order manufacturing orders. There's not a huge bit of difference between the two of them, uh, but the only one of the only differences that does make itself apparent is the fact that you can't edit the actual quantity on a uh, make to order manufacturing order. You can only do that to a make to stock order. So first we'll look at the make to stock orders and kind of cover the details here with respect to that. Okay, so first off, manufacturing order number five. Um, this is your order number, which is automatically generated. If you're using the make to order workflow, we'll actually pull over the sales order number for the manufacturing order number in that instance. So if you actually import your, let's say sales orders from another system, e-commerce or custom setup, then you press the make to order button, then we'll actually see the manufacturing order number be relative to the sales order number. And it will have a link back to the sales order too. Production deadline, this is calculated based on the fact if you have the configurator turned on, if it is turned on, then this is locked. If it is turned off, then you can actually edit it manually. This updates itself based on the position in the queue. So that's why you'll see a, uh, no ability to edit it. Creation date, this is the date when that actual manufacturing order has been made, uh, meaning that it was created in our system. The planned quantity versus the actual quantity is um, a much wider area, but basically in short form, the planned quantity is the amount in which the manufacturing order was originally created to make. But sometimes the output might be a little different and there are different cases where um, the actual output could be lower or in some cases higher. And that can really depend on the type of manufacturing you're doing. So if, for example, you are, I don't know, making bread and you make muffins and you have a recipe for 10 muffins, but your actual quantity in the end is 11 muffins, then you might want to put that here. There's other cases where you would have something called overruns or underruns, where um, even though the recipe or ingredients was the same, then you might produce a little bit more or a little less if you have, let's say, like a high volume type of product that you're making. Uh, there are certain types of cases where um, that can deviate quite a bit, and it all depends on the actual manufacturing process that you have, because in certain cases, um, the actual quantity that pops out uh, might not necessarily be the output, but it would be the actual quantity of good product. So you might have a QA step that you have to account for. You might be accidentally overproducing or underproducing because something is wrong with your process. Um, there's a variable amount of different ways in which this, um, this is facilitated. Now, the actual quantity is also um, something that is very closely linked to our shop floor functionality. So when you have operators using uh, the task uh, the task function in the floor app, they can also, at the moment the manufacturing order has been completed, they can actually state what is the actual quantity of product that was output after the MO has been done. And then that information will update here. And of course, it will update your uh, stock quantities accordingly and, um, and then allocate the correct amount of cost based on how much ingredients and operations have been accumulated. So anyway, planned versus actual quantity uh, exist here. So whenever you complete a manufacturing order, you'll actually have the actual available. And, um, and you can use this to review kind of how your performance has been historically with your manufacturing processes. And I'll show you exactly where this type of information will be available uh, at a later time, since currently it's blank, since the manufacturing order is not started, but when it is completed, this should be filled out. Now, going into the ingredients and operations, there is also 
uh, something called planned versus actual quantity of ingredients used. And then there is also uh, planned amount of time versus actual amount of time used for your operations. And so in this list, you'll see the ingredients that are actually pulled in from the item card in the uh, recipe bomb section. And then you'll see the items that are pulled in from the operation section of the item card for this particular product, the beige dining table. So when we were setting those up in the uh, items series, then this is where it's pulling that information directly off of the specific product card for that variant. And uh, when you're making two pieces, basically what it's taking is, is multiplying the bill of materials times two to get the double planned, of, uh, planned ingredients to consume, and then also calculating it times two to get the total amount of planned time for your operations uh, also entered here. So when it comes to costing, if you have planned this amount of cost, then the actual quantity that gets used up will be um, reflected in the cost uh, once the manufacturing order has been completed. So the planned quantity of ingredients will come at a certain cost, but at the end of the day, it's the actual uh, cost of ingredients that matters based on how much you actually consumed. And the same applies for operations. If I plan to spend eight hours on the cutting task, but I spent 12 hours, then it's going to cost more to make those tables than if it had been what I planned for. If I spent six hours on the cutting task to make these two tables, then I'm actually saving money. And the same goes for the ingredients. So why planned versus actual are so important is because when you manufacture, you're basically budgeting how much it is going to cost you to make something. And then not everything goes according to plan, as the old saying goes. So if you can actually capture how much material was used and actually capture how much time was spent, then the reality of your costing becomes evident. And so these ingredients that are consumed are incurring cost against the product, and so are the operations. But that cost value that goes into the product uh, it removes these ingredients from your material stock at their average cost. And now that we're starting to come back full circle to the average cost question, remember in the, uh, in the buy screen uh, videos, we, we created a purchase order, and then I showed how that incurs cost against your stock, and then it averages it out based on your current value in stock divided by your current inventory gives you your unit uh, moving average cost. And then whatever the moving average cost is for wood or the moving average cost is for beige paint at the time this manufacturing order is completed is what gets reflected in that specific quantity multiplied by its current cost and it will populate this field here. When we get to the operations side, this part is quite challenging to track if you don't have the shop floor app. but if you are um, you know, updating this, let's say you did the printing function and your guys came back and you filled it out, you can also come in here and edit the amount of time that was actually spent on some of these uh, operations. And these operations are also um, going to show you the current status that they're presently in. Uh, they can have multiple statuses that include not started, in progress, paused, completed, or blocked. Um, much of which are very similar to uh, the overall manufacturing order status. So that way, as soon as somebody is starting on one of these, meaning let's say it moves to in progress, then it actually is going to update the overall status of the manufacturing order to a work in progress if somebody's actually doing an operation on that manufacturing order. If you ever reset it, then you'll have to come up to the top and manually reset the MO itself as in its entirety. So these are the uh, ingredients, and then these are the operations. Um, it works very similar to a lot of the other um, types of order cards we have in Katana. Uh, you can delete line items. You can also modify an individual manufacturing order. 
So if you, for example, are making something, and a really great example might be that uh, I'm making shirts, and it's maybe not a bad, maybe not a good example, but I'm making shirts, and what I need to do is I need the ingredients here to uh, include one blank T-shirt, and maybe in my operations I will have a uh, a dyeing process so I'm gonna make this t-shirt blue so I would have in my ingredients here the t-shirt itself plus some sort of blue dye then I would have an operation that says dyeing this t-shirt for example and then it would go through that process so um, maybe what I might do is the customer wants a, a special custom type of dye that uh, needs to be added as an operation that's custom made for that specific shirt. But I do have a bill of materials already existing for the shirt that says I need to use uh, the blue dye and one white t-shirt in the ingredients list. And then it has like a the standardized dyeing process, but then I need to go in here and add a custom dyeing process in case I do tie dye or something silly like that. Or maybe they want to tie in an actual um, different color. So I would add a new row for a second color or a new row for a second operation. And what you can do with Katana is enable that flexibility with your manufacturing process by going in and modifying a single manufacturing order without affecting the actual product card of this associated manufactured, manufactured good. So the product card will continue to remain the same with its recipe and operations, even if you physically modify an individual manufacturing order that is specific to that item. So lots of, uh, lots of flexibility involved here with those elements. With your ingredients as well, you can go in and buy them directly from here. So if you're missing something, I can see that, okay, this item is expected. I need to buy three and a half liters for stock. And then I can do the entire purchase order workflow straight out of the manufacturing order in the instances where it's needed. And um, yes, that's pretty much the majority of everything on a manufacturing order. Uh, a few other elements worth noting is we have the print templates also here for the individual MOs and also the ability to duplicate and delete manufacturing orders. You can also indeed uh, add additional information here at the bottom, which will be visible to people using the shop floor app if they're on a pro package. And you can also add notes to the ingredients items inside of this individual manufacturing order that are specific to that manufacturing order itself. And then put that information uh, directly here. And that will also be visible to uh, people that are using the floor app if they need to make some special considerations for the type of material ingredients that they're using. Now, in addition to this MO, which is a make to stock manufacturing order, I'll uh, just jump jump back once more to this make to order manufacturing order. And inside of this one, um, you'll see that there is a linked sales order that is tied back to the sales order page. Now, another thing worth noting uh, for these manufacturing orders that are linked to sales is that they travel together up and down the manufacturing order list. So for example, uh, you'll see that there is a grouping of two orders that are staying side by side in this, let's say number two rank. These travel together as a group because they're actually both linked to the exact same sales order, um, which is a guy named Rob Decor. And so uh, because of that ranking, there is also the, um, there is also the, uh, the chance where you're not necessarily able to disconnect those two in that scenario. So in case you notice that there's two smashed together like that, that means that they are linked by a sales order as a group. Okay, that pretty much summarizes the manufacturing order card. Next, we will start to jump into our tasks, tasks view.